The LNP approached this Queensland election campaign with all the discipline of a corporate consulting team. Gantt charts, PowerPoints, and a clear focus on the big three issues, crime, cost of living, and health. David Crisofulli was disciplined, focused, and he worked like a demon, and he deserves this win. He tackled the campaign with what can only be described as caffeinated zeal. Apart from his deputy, most of the rest of the team was kept away from the limelight. Probably a good idea since their performance in opposition in terms of standing up for traditional Liberal Party values has been extremely average. All was under Chris Afuli's tight and disciplined control until Robbie Catter, the son of Bob and the leader of the KAP, casually tossed a uh, spark, shall we say, into the mix with his comments on abortion laws, handing the ALP an easy scare campaign to play with. The LNP's small target approach, running on an if we don't say too much, they can't pin much on us strategy, had left a gaping vacuum, as small target strategies do. And in politics, like nature, a vacuum will always be filled. Voters filled it with fears, worries, and whatever they heard on Talkback Radio. This was Robbie Catter on Sky before the election. What I'm determined to do is put back in the Babies Born Alive bill, which is um, really just mimicking what is the code of practice code in Queensland Health right now, which is saying if a baby's planned abortion comes out breathing with a heartbeat, um, probably going to struggle for life, but that they can just give it some care and dignity. It's a human rights issue. It's not an abortion issue to me. Uh, that's what we've determined to put back in. We put it in the last parliament. It didn't even get, that didn't even get support from Liberal and Labor. In the, in the committee system. I want to put that in first into the next parliament and we'll see what happens. So you're not... Now, I had an obstetrics nurse explain to me what happens to babies that are born alive at about 15 weeks. Uh, and I, it's horrific. Um, I, I, I can't even begin to explain <laughs> uh, because it, medical intervention isn't permitted. Um, and what Robbie Catter is thinking about doing there is not that dramatic. It's not going to take away women's right to choose within a reasonable time frame. Um, but on election night itself, Channel 7 Brisbane's new prime time news anchor, Sarah Greenhall, Greenhall, Greenhow, uh, she spoke for all women, apparently, and men on this issue. This has caused women a huge amount of fear and anxiety in this state. This is a very public platform. Would you like to apologise or show all any women? remorse for what you've done? A huge amount of uh, Ro all, Robbie. There has been a spike, Robbie. There has been a spike in women calling health services, GPs, obstetricians, clinics up and down this state. I spoke mm. to several of them yesterday. You might find it surprising. There's people have an alternate view to you, but I would argue there's babies in this equation as well. They need representation. Oh my God. You seem to deny that. That's fine. Robbie, you're talking to but a pregnant. You're talking to a pregnant, a pregnant woman actually at the moment. So I'm well aware that there are babies involved. We're allowed to have some beliefs that differ to yours and uh, different other people. We've got the loosest abortion laws in the country. We're allowed to say, oh, we think you know you've gone too far. We're allowed to have an alternate view in this state, aren't we? You keep hounding me over. I'm just saying I'm going to test the parliament. And that's what's going to happen. I'm not hounding you. This is the first time we've had this discussion. But do you at least acknowledge that this is, this is irresponsible, Robbie, to say, I'm going to test the parliament. This just causes women so much angst. There are only four countries in the world that have regressed on this issue. The United States, obviously very high profile. We've all seen what's happened there. Poland, well, you Nicaragua, the Nicaragua you in Central regress. America and El Salvador. Well, they have regressed, Robbie. They've yeah, gone backwards you, you, in well, time. Well, you use the word... Well, you keep gaslighting here. You use the word regressed. I think you love you know, fleshing out the debate and then pointing the finger over and saying, you can't have a different opinion to us. I'm Robbie, sure to provide Robbie, if I had my choice, you know, if I had my choice, we wouldn't that, be talking, uh, we wouldn't be talking about going backwards. She's not the sharpest knife, is she? She just didn't get it. He's saying that the very assumption in the question itself, that to adjust Queensland's very liberal abortion laws would mean we're going backwards or regressing, is not a view that everybody shares. Now, if you're sitting at home thinking, who's this bloke on television talking about abortion and what right does he have? Uh, I've spoken to a lot of conservative women about this and, and consulted on them <laughs> before I wrote this uh, as well. So uh, these views are, are shared by different people. Uh, and was she trying to do some sort of gotcha with the I'm pregnant thing? I mean, it's lovely that you're pregnant. That's wonderful. Congratulations. But it's really got nothing to do with this story that you're supposed to be covering. So... Despite what she and her friends in the inner cities might think, 
uh, you can, in practical terms, get an abortion pretty much on demand up to about 26 weeks in Queensland. And there are lots of people in Australia, including lots of women, who think that that is just a little bit too liberal because they believe that the fetus at that point may be a human with its own rights. Now, some of them would say absolutely it is or it's a human being at conception. Um, I, I don't share that view. Uh, but there comes a point, right, where you've got to say, well, hang on, when does this become a person? And nobody can really, I don't believe, really answer that question. So there has to be compromise. And we're not going to reach a sensible compromise on this issue while people just keep shouting at each other and not listening to each other. And this type of pea-brained interviewing from B-grade old media anchors just isn't going to cut it. Anyway, let's quickly review some of the other issues that impacted this election. There were the 50 cent public transport fares. It was advertised as a ticket to equality, but for most it was a solution in search of a problem. Queensland's transport usage isn't exactly sky high, so far from equality, perhaps the ads should have read, funded by you, enjoyed by a few. And then there was Stephen Miles' free school lunches policy disaster that he was still spruiking even on election night in that terrible speech. Apparently, handing students government-sponsored sandwiches is the cure for Australia's diabetes crisis and kids' ADHD. One small step for school lunches, one giant leap for diabetes could have been that tagline. On the LNP side, the party couldn't escape the spectre of its past. They were haunted by the ghosts of former LNP Premier Campbell Newman's public service job cuts back in 2014-15 that the ALP's campaign capitalised on yet again, 10 years after the fact. Why does this still linger? Because the LNP never bothered to confront it and set the record straight. The public service was bloated and it was sending us broke and Newman was right to do what he did. And the current massive debt in que Queensland proves that. Try saying that for once, LNP guys. Then there was the LNP leader himself who managed to project more distaste than relatability. Charm and approachability are key ingredients in any campaign. And right up until probably around the last week, although he did well in the end, uh, this was an election uh, that a tired old government lost more than the LNP won. Chris Afuli wasn't really able to muster much charm or approachability. I'm hoping he's going to do a lot better as Premier because it is something he will need to fix if he's going to tackle the huge issues that face him as Premier. Spiralling debt, a bloated public service, and angry, way too powerful unions. Thirdly, if there's one thing Australians love in their elections, it's a good hearty bit of political mudslinging and humour. The LNP left their negative campaign tools somewhere in the back room. Instead of sinking their teeth into the ALP's 10-year track record with well-placed jabs, they opted to play nice. This wasn't a chess match, it was Queensland politics, and the LNP missed the chance to turn the ALP's track record into a case study of what not to do in government. And finally, yet most importantly for how they might govern in the future, the LNP, LNP also seemed to lose touch with the very principles that their traditional supporters value. Fiscal responsibility, small government, private enterprise. Small government, small business. Business-minded Queenslanders found themselves scratching their heads, wondering if they'd missed a major memo. With the LNP seemingly adrift, many long-time supporters felt that they'd lost a compass, leading some to sit this election out or cast their vote elsewhere. If you have a Netflix or other streaming media account from a global company and you're on holidays and log in from another country, you may have noticed that shows that are available in those other countries are different. That's because different media companies have different deals with different streaming services in different countries. Imagine being able to log into Netflix though, as if you were in America, or maybe a country that speaks a language other than English that you speak, to access more shows, but you can do it all without leaving your couch here in Australia. Well, there is a way, there is a way. Private Internet Access VPN is a virtual private network. You download their app onto your phone, your TV, your computer, whatever you use, and it'll route your data through a different server location. Not only can you access more content, but a VPN keeps you safe and secure and your family safe so that you can't be tracked by prying eyes of big government and big corporations. And it will not massively slow down your internet speeds or make it harder 
to, do, to uh, use your devices like some other VPNs do. Private Internet Access, PIA VPN. It's quick and easy to install, and once you've downloaded it, that is pretty much it. And the great news is if you sign up for PIA VPN, you are also helping the other side heaps and getting great value for money as well. And you can sign up using our special other side code for less than $3 a month. That's a whopping 83% off the normal price and you'll get the first four months free. Just go to piavpn.com forward slash other side right now to get our special deal. That's piavpn.com forward slash other side. If you like that clip, there's more where that came from in our full show, The Other Side. You can watch it right here, the latest episode. And please subscribe to our channel by pressing the subscribe button right here or down here. And remember to click that notification bell too. It all helps. Join us and become part of The Other Side.